Welcome to this week's edition of the Casual Shooters Podcast. Tonight it's me and Chris. Leo might be joining us a little bit later. And another week, another distinguished guest. This one is Brian Conley of Hunter's HD Gold fame. We're going to bring him on in a minute and we're going to talk glasses. Lots of glasses. So well, let's go ahead and do that now. How you doing, Brian? Doing well. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Oh, it's our pleasure. If you would, take 30 seconds to a minute, whatever, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let uh, everybody out in podcast land know who you are. Wonderful. My name is Brian Conley. I am the founder and president of Hunter's HD Gold here in Alabama and started Hunter's HD Gold back in 2017 and started supporting matches real heavy in 18 and more in 19 and more last year and got over, I think, 78 matches I've sponsored so far this year. And I think I got about 38 to 39 on the calendar so far. So it's going to be a fun year in 2021. Wow, that's a busy year. So, Brian, what we normally do is we uh, we take uh, a few minutes and we get to know our guest by asking them some personal questions. <laughs> <laughs> the first one we usually go with is, what's your favorite movie? Oh, wow. Favorite movie. Oh, ooh, I mean, hold on a second. There's so many. I, I mean, I, first one always comes to my mind because I grew up in the 70s with Star Wars. Okay. You can go with it. Uh, that's that's pretty much, I mean, uh, just, I, I watch movies all over the place, but they have a favorite. Oh, there's another one that is a, a favorite of mine. The Wolf of Wall Street has, has just been really, I, I watched it up on TV. I just, I'm, I'm already, I'm going to watch it. No matter where it starts at in the movie, I love the drive and the Wolf of Wall Street. And I've actually read the book of the gentleman. I can't name his name right now, who actually, the book was written about it. And it's a very, very impressive. And um, that's, I'll take Star Wars, my past, and currently it's Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. All right, go ahead, Huggy. You ask the next one. All right. So uh, what is your favorite book? Could be Ooh. Arthur or book. Lately, oh, it's another one of those things. Um, I have been listening to Michael's Bane podcast when I'm driving for the past, um, I guess, three years now. And recently, I have, um, I say recently, recently over the past two or three months, I've purchased all his books um, wherever I could find them through eBay or Amazon. And some right. of them are pretty impressive. And um, I've been reading all of Michael Bain's book lately. So I'm really impressed with Michael Bain as an author and where he got started and what he's gone through through the musical career and all the stuff he's followed to where he's at now for our Second Amendment gun rights. Very um, uh, So Michael Bain would be my favorite author right now. Okay. Awesome. Good. How about your favorite fictional character? Mm. You can either go They're, fictional character or historical character or a figure, historical figure, either one. Mm, historical figure. Um, <clears throat> historical figure or a character. Mm. I guess I'd have to go um, um, Roosevelt based on all the stuff he did for the federal lands and having hunting properties and all the you know protecting so much land like he did um in the past to have a place for you know that would not be touched by anything else so teddy that. not franklin excuse me teddy yes exactly teddy excuse okay. me a long day not <laughs> <laughs> well, i had to wait to see which direction you were going with that i'm like that it's gonna go one of two ways here we go my fault. I, I got up at 6.30 this morning, and I have just got back on a personal trip I had to take last weekend, take care of some family matters. And um, I got up today, and I said, I'm getting ready to get everything ready for the you know the traveling, get everything loaded up. And with all the new stuff I'm doing this year, it took all day to get all that set up like I wanted to. And we can discuss more of that later on in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I will have to say you are definitely the man on the go because every time I see you, you are definitely on the go. Yes, <laughs> so much. So, it's been a lot of fun so, building the. You know, it, it, it takes being there, and it takes the devotion to want to make people understand that I'm just not a 
fly by night company because we being in any kind of sports or any kind of activities, you always see those companies that are there for one thing or there for one one season and all of a sudden then you don't ever see them again and they're gone. So I'm 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 in this for the long haul because I truly believe that without the shooting sports, um the Second Amendment will be in a lot more trouble than it already is. Amen. Yeah, for sure. Yes. So Okay, well, here's here's the next question for you. What is your favorite caliber? Uh, it could be, you know, any type of I guess pistol, rifle. Um, I'm, I'm looking at my, I'm looking. I got I'm in my gun room, so I'm looking over my guns now. And I, yeah, when it comes to me, I think it's 500 S and W because I got a Smith and Wesson 500 S and W, and it's just a it's just a machine and that's one of those, you know, that's my favorite caliber. Now that's for just every day. Just let's have some fun. Um, hunting wise, when I do my hunting, it's a 308. Oh, very nice. And for those out there in uh podcast land that cannot see, Brian has a very beautiful background of these beautiful, beautiful rifles. Uh, I tell you, it's just, it's, it just makes me just go, ooh, that's nice. I, I just want to get up on the screen, look real close, and say, ooh, what's that back there? So that's <laughs> nice. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a nice background. Dave? And if you're listening, after you get done with this episode of the podcast, slide on over to YouTube and watch the video version. You'll be able to see what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what about favorite gun? Who? My the, my favorite gun that I've done the most with is my Steyr Scout 308. Okay. Do you hunt with it's that? A, I do. That's what I hunt with. Um, it's it's you know, you know, you know, the always you hear people talk about when you have a firearm or a hunting rifle or in, in your in your shooting sports that you know the gun the firearm, firearm becomes a part of your body, and when I pick up the um, Steyr Scout. It's just an extension of my arms and very comfortable to hunt with. And I know that when I harvest the animal I'm going after, there will be no, it, it's going to happen quick and, the, and it's going down. So it's, it's, it's just another extension of my peace when I go hunting in that. And it's just, that's, you know, it's kind of like wearing a watch every day. If I get in the woods, I've got my, my star scout with me. I assume you have an optic on it. I do. I do. That's, um, Tarosky and it's a Z8. I, um, Z8i last year, so it's not the new one. It just came out in the Z8i. I, just, I got a, um, you know, that's more money. I didn't want to put into a new one just for the extra benefits of the range finder and everything else that was built into it. <laughs> okay, definitely not a bottom shelf optic though. <laughs> no, I, I got involved in um, firearms just back in um, late 2011. Um, I was always told by talking to people, you know, you know, your, um, hunting rifle is only as good as your optics, you know, can, you know, be able to, you know, portray that and a lot of other discussions, of course. But so I was told never to splurge, never not to splurge on an optic. I was told to get what you want, buy once, cry once. Okay. So, okay. Uh, we noticed on your website now getting into the meat and potatoes. We noticed on your website you've been in business for, or the company's been around for 40 years? Yes, this is our 44th year. My wife's mother started the company um, back in 1977. And um, it's a great story uh, if you want to discuss how she got started. But she was, you know, divorced from her husband at that time. And she was out on her own to start a business. And she worked for a company that, um, called American Optical, and he went through the ranks there and ended up being a district level, and they ended up closing that lab down here in Birmingham, and she had had all the contacts and all the information of how to get things started up, and she went to a local businessman here in Birmingham, Alabama, because back in the 70s, you know, women didn't have a lot of credit. It was always Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, you know, for credit, and um, this gentleman gave her a loan of um, 300 and something thousand dollars back in the um, 70s. Wow. And um, he had it paid back within five years with interest. And um, 
it's one of those things that she used to always go to optical events and optical um, play, uh, expos to buy equipment and stuff like that. And she would, you know, the, the people would always say, well, when your husband comes by, you know, we'll, 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 we'll got to talk to both of you. And they didn't realize that she was it. And she's still living today. She lives with me and my wife, Sherry, who owns the company. She's retired. Of course, we would not let her anywhere near the lab now, <laughs> but um, <laughs> those things, well, she's, she's hardcore. She's um, she, some of the stuff that we do today that she didn't, we've never done back in the day. She wouldn't have, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have any employees left, but um, you know, when I come home from an event every um, late Sunday night or either on Monday, you know, she's the one at the door waiting for me, asking how the um, how everything went and give her the rundown on it. So it's pretty cool how she's excited that, you know, for 40 plus years, you know, the company was never opened up to the public. It was just a wholesale optical lab that was just selling directly to doctors and, and eye care professionals throughout the southeast. And then when I came up with this idea to do this and um, Sherry backed me up, who's my wife, it was one of those things where. It was the first time that they'd ever thought about going directly to the public with a product. And that's what we've been doing now. And it's just been a um, lifesaver for what happened last year with um, everything shutting down from March to April in Alabama because all the optometrists and ophthalmologists were closed. But since we had this brand, um, Hunter's HD Gold, and through the help of the USPSA getting the word out, we started making responders um, here locally in central Alabama. I went to eight different police stations and fire stations. All of them know that you have any, if you have any problems with your glasses during this you know, time, your doctors are closed, but the manufacturing, we're still open. And we had that response you know, shared throughout the United States with the United States Practical Shooting Association. And that actually kept us in business for those two months. We didn't even have to close down based on Hunter's HD Gold and other doing eyewear for other professionals in the um, first responders around the United States. It's a pretty cool process what happened. That's awesome. <clears throat> now, I had a question and <laughs> lost it there at the end of the train of the thought there. Anyway. So that's the history. Now, I how I noticed you've had the HD Gold since the beginning, but you just came up with a new color, Ruby. Right. Yes. When did you guys come out with that? I've been working on that project since the summer of 2018 when I was at Aguila Cup in um, Texas, north of Fort Worth, Texas. Um, I, was, I was there supporting the match um, with Hunter's HD Gold, and a lot of guys, a lot of shotgunners were coming by saying, oh, these are amazing, blah, blah, blah. Like, blah all, the, all the feedback we get from Hunter's HD Gold, and they said, well, you know, I got feedback. You know, we, hey, we'd love you to do something in red, love something to do something in purple, and, you know, that always stuck with me. And <clears throat> we've been trying, like I said, for – Yes, it's a strong seven or eight months and they just couldn't get any colors right because I wanted something that was um, using a gray-based photochromic instead of a brown-based photochromic like Hunter's HD Gold. And I wanted something to be able to color, go across some different wavelengths that would help just like red and purple does together, but have that in the same lens. And... April of last year, right in the heart of the, um, the, the pandemic that was going on around us, Marcus came to me, my lab manager, and goes, they came out with a new medical dye. And based on the, the time of the dyeing process, it goes from this color to this color. But I think we can get, you know, the color right because he'd been bringing me colors for the past seven months and I didn't even look at it because I told him, I said, if it doesn't, I have a, I have a, my wedding ring has a diamond on one side and a ruby on the other. If you've ever seen me at a match. And I said, if it doesn't look like this ruby, don't even bring it to me. And that was, you know, cause I knew what color at, what base color I wanted to have to start with because I wanted that vividness or something out there. And then Marcus came to me um, in April. And as soon as he got the dying process down and, and showed it to me, I said, I think this is it, you know, and, I called um, some friends, friends of mine 
that were with me before Hunter's HD Gold even had a name, that shoot shotgun. And I said, I need you to come by the lab. I've got something that's um wanna want you to get your feedback immediately. And um one of the gentlemen who's retired from Smith and Wesson, Stan Shaparsky, um, shoots um shotgun and he was the first one that came by, wore him that day to shoot, and um he didn't give them back. And, and that's <laughs> I think that's called theft. <laughs> right. <laughs> Of uh, you know, it makes the you know the orange side of the clay just pop. It makes the back side of the clay, which is black, just pop. It makes everything pop that's not supposed to be there. I said, "What are you doing tomorrow?" And he goes, "I don't know," because he's retired. I said, "Well, let's go shoot some shotgun." <laughs> so I got myself a pair and went and shot with them the next day, and I was amazed by you know because it's a very aggressive color. A very aggressive color. The Hunter's HD Ruby is, is just very aggressive because if you have worn Hunter's HD Go before, I found this out at the Florida Open and it was really, really odd, but I, I love it. It was pretty neat to have an eye opening, a minute, minute, eye opening moment like that. But if you've worn Hunter's HD Go before, it takes about four to six minutes to get your color back. If you've never worn Hunter's HD Go before, it takes up to 15 minutes to get your color back. And I can't explain it, I don't know why. It was just something I found out at the Florida Open. But um, based on that aggressive color, I was wearing it to go shoot shotgun the next day. The stand was so excited about it. And basically, I don't shoot much, you know, sporting clays um, at all. And I, I was blowing the birds up. And what blew my mind was the, um, you can see your hits better. And what I mean by that is, if you just chip a clay, you may or may not see that, and the judge may or may not see that. This gives an effect of you know fireworks going off during the day because you can see all the pieces when it breaks apart. That's how much it does everything. So it's that really took me back. And then I called some, I think, but during that first week, I called 13 other people throughout different parts of the United States. And I said, hey, I'm getting ready to send you something, blah, 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 NDA, all that good kind of stuff. Because we kept it secret. I'm, re I'm really shocked that it never got leaked out at all before the time. But we um, sent it out to everybody. And they these people shot shotgun. These people shot steel challenge. These people shot USPSA. They shot IDPA. They, um, even one person had shot, just shoots. Um, I lost my train of thought. Shoots um, airsoft. So it was a different thing altogether, and it was indoors. They don't work great indoors. So that just go ahead and get that right out there. <laughs> or there's, there's not an indoor lens. Um, but it is a lens that is designed for staring at the sky and being able to mute everything else that's not really supposed to be there. And and you you will see a depth in the clouds, a depth in the trees, you're not going to have a problem being able to know what distance you're at when you take your shots. And that's a an odd thing to say, but when you first put them on, I always take people are outside the tent. So let's go over here and look at the clouds and if there's clouds. Or if not, I'll say, look at the trees, look at them without the lens, then put them on and you can see the depth. You can tell what's behind and the six different layers of clouds that you usually can't see with the naked eye that you can see this breaks through and you can see the seven different layers of clouds. It's a pretty cool process. Um, so I sent that out to everybody and um, waited for the feedback to come back in. And I, I was in I think, people from all the way to California, as far north as, um, as Wisconsin, um, Minnesota, far south as Florida, of course. And I had pretty much everything covered across the United States to get the feedback. And uh, everybody came back with um, lots of great experiences and, and everything else. And um, we finally got to a point where I wanted to bring some new frames on board that were different based on the shotgun world does not, you know, they care about safety. Everybody cares about safety in IPRO, but the Z87 frames and ANSI 2020 on the lenses is not as important to a shotgunner as it is with people that are shooting steel and have a lot of ricochets coming back at them and, and people shooting USPSA. So, I took a different perspective to say, I want to find some more frames that, you know, people in shotgun world can use 
compared to what they're currently using now. So it's not going from a, like, oh, this is a really sleek looking frame and all this other stuff to here's a safety that they know it's a total difference there. And I know what I've had to deal with for the past three years of um, Hunter's HD Gold and having safety frames. But that was the deal when Sherry talked about where, you know, where's our liability at, what we're doing. I said, you know, you are going to use safety frames and have all the lenses, ANSI 2020, ANSI 2015 at the time, but we just got the new ratings in. But um, I want that way we could worry about the safety aspect of it because we don't want to take a business that's been in business for so long, have some issues where we're not really protecting people's eyes and have to worry about that. Yeah, yeah, it does. That, that's kind of what got us started on Ruby, but it started back in 18. It took that long. I didn't want to bring anything to market until, you know, if you've ever put Hunter's HD Gold on the, for the first time, you always, you know, most of most responses are like, wow, whoa, wow. Just, you know, an amazing experience. And you're going to have that same experience again with Hunter's HD Ruby. So that's when I want, I just didn't want to put it on. Somebody put it on and go, oh, this is just a, the basic rose or pink or, you know, just, and not be wowed by it. I had to give something to prove that, no, this is a little bit different and it's going to take you a minute to get used to. And I'm going to change your game in the shotgun world like we've done in the um, shooting sports. So did you know you would get that effect with the red beforehand? Based on what I read, yes. But it wasn't the depth that I wanted and what I just of you know red when you put a red on you're going to get a different perspective altogether and that's normal but then when you go over to purple that gives you some more depth in the range in the distance so to get both of those at once that was where the aha moment came in and I was very satisfied okay because hey, I'll be honest I um I get the green or you know, the gold lenses. Um, I've shot long range, high power NRA competition. And we used aviator sunglasses with like the yellow or green lenses. And it was a high contrast, which was very good. It, right. it really made that bullseye stand out at a thousand yards when you're using iron sights. So you could really line them up well. So when I saw the ruby, I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I, I am now a, ever since then, so for the last 30 years, I've been using yellow slash green lenses. So my, you know, so for me, I'm wondering how, how does this benefit me? And I will throw in there that I am all, I also have a red green color deficiency. Okay. And I saw on your website that it might help those individuals. Yes, the one person I sent it to was in um, Hamilton, Texas, and um, he's he is um, has some red green color blindness. And um, I said, I'm fixing to send you something because he he had been hearing about this and that, all the new technologies that come out you know, on some some other things that are polarized and not polarized. There's a lot of technologies out there that are trying to, to cover the color blind market, and it's a hit or miss. And that's why there's so many choices because what works for you may not work for Chris. And that's just one of those things that goes back and forth where, you know, well, this works for me, but this, what they came out with this new dye. Had, like, remember I told you at the, earlier when you, when you dye at a certain time, it goes this color, you keep in the dye longer, it goes this, you know, changes colors. Mm -hmm. This, those different spectrums are different people based on where their red, green dye color blindness is at. Um, that was something that um, I was very pleased when Charles told me that, you know, he took a colorblind test. I think he scored 60 something. And then after he put the Hunter's HD Ruby on, he scored an 80 something. So he saw a drastic improvement, which was pretty cool. Cause I don't, I can't, I don't have a lot of, I don't know how to empathize with somebody who has that issue. Cause I don't have that situation myself. So for him to give me that kind of feedback was just amazing. And uh, that's kind of, we've had some other people since then that have, you know, said, Hey, this helps a lot with this. Now, um, you know, where you're going into this is Hunter's HD Gold. You, you've heard about all the different uses for it. Um, of course, shooting, hunting, and shooting early in the morning, and shooting and hunting early in the morning, 30 minutes before sunrise, 30 minutes after sunset when you're hunting, late in the evening when you're at, at, at shoots, 
Um, that run late, you know, you can keep these on, then you keep them on while you're driving at night because they're going to, you know, help with um, the blue lights from other people's headlights to block, to block all that down. They help with, um, I wear them, you know, I wear them every day um, when I'm awake and it's, they help with eye fatigue on the computer all day. They help with um, fluorescent lights all have that blue light in them now and it helps protect. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any eye fatigue. And then talking to a couple of people in the medical industry, I've come to find out this dye also blocks melatonin from being produced in your eyes throughout the day. And then when you take them off, all that melatonin build is built, that is built up is released and you fall asleep easier because it keeps melatonin from being created in your eyes as well. So there's a lot of medical benefits about that. Now, um, I got people that use them for playing golf. I got people that use them for tennis because they can actually, and out in Arizona, there's a whole tennis team that uses them that they can actually see the ball turning against the, you know, the court they're using it on, which is a, a great feedback. I've even got somebody now that's using them that wanted to use them this year coming up in, um, in softball to see if they can see the ball rotation because they premiered with the shooting side of it. So we'll see. I've got um, a lot. I've, I've, I did some hunting this off season with some people in different industries as well that are using them. And hopefully um, we'll find out some more information back in the spring, how that's going to work out with somebody else using them in some other sports as well. So I'll keep that as much down low on that as I can. Dan, we got Hunter's HD Ruby. It's designed for staring at the sky all day and being in situations. That's it. So it's not good for driving at night. It's not good for indoor shooting. It's not. It doesn't have the, all the same properties on the scale of visual experience that you do with Hunter's HD Gold. So if you're a shotgunner, this is it. I mean, this is this is your lens to try. And I want to know what you don't like about it so I can see if that can be something I can work with. And if I, when I went to Florida Open, I had 18 pairs with me um, just because I, you know, I was taking some with me down there to let people look at them and see how I liked them. And I came back with zero. So wow. I sold out. So wow. I had a lot of people down in Frostproof that were facing um, east in the morning, right over the berms. This helped. Um, I'd, I'd had feedback before where people that shoot red dot optics that they had to turn their dot down and they loved it on carry optics and they loved it down in that bright, sunny Florida. That was not the intentions, but they loved it and it sold like crazy down in Florida. And did a lot of prescription orders and a lot of custom orders as well to bring back. So, you know, some of the people I got feedback from and still challenge, you know, love it. And because it allowed the white to pop on their clays and, and it allowed that red dot, you know, because, you know, when you turn a red dot up, all it does is flare more. Right. You know, you turn, with Hunter's HD Ruby, you actually have to turn it so bright on your red dot, you actually have to turn it down. So when you're turning it down, it gives that crisper red dot like it's supposed to be done and with all the um vortex optics we tested it that we had no problems at all from a 3086 mla to all the other stuff we were using with a vortex and it worked great with um with the red dot. And if you have a green fiber optic or a green dot then you're gonna have to wait for hunter's hd emerald and i don't know when that's going to be released <laughs> oh but look oh he's sneak peek though unlike ruby he at least let the color out <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Well, I've never. I think I've done anything. Green, so I haven't even started on that. <laughs> I'm hoping everybody red ain't got to worry about it. <laughs> well, and you know, I, I mean, as you were talking and you were saying, you know, that it's good for staring at the sky and a few other things. You know, there are mountain climbers, hikers, people like that that I could see. You're Ski saying there's a greater scares. depth of field too. Yes, yes, there is. And Don't. I've had people get Hunter's HD Gold for me to go on that, to hiking on Appalachian Trail. Um, I got Bill in Alaska who does a lot of hiking up in the mountains up there, and he's always wearing Hunter's HD Gold. So um, to get to feet, you know, one thing about hiking and like that, if you're in an open situation like Bill usually is, where there's not a lot of trees up that high, then it works great. But on the AT, 
on on our side, you're going in the sunlight, going back in the shade. And I think the Hunter's HD Gold would still be better in that situation because when you get in darker situations with early in the morning or going in the wood, I went in the woods with them. I didn't like them at all because it just it didn't do the it didn't do the contrast like we're used to with Hunter's HD Gold in the woods. So, you know, I never saw a turkey feather to see if it did anything with turkey feathers like Hunter's HD Gold. But I do know that, you know, there's a lot of limitations. You know, if you buy Hunter's HD Ruby thinking you're going to have all the uses of Hunter's HD Gold, I'm telling you now, you will not have the same uses. You will not like it. Um, driving at night, um, I tried that just to see what happened. It didn't last 15 minutes. And the reason being is, you know, those reflectors they put in the roads, that one side shows mm -hmm white and if you're going the wrong way it shows red well guess what it picks up red so well some of those reflectors aren't put up right and if you look in the rearview mirror it looks like a runway <laughs> oh <laughs> wow <laughs> it picks up all that red like crazy and you can i mean you can see tail lights for for miles but seeing the side <laughs> of the road not very good for ruby at all i didn't like it but it picks up red that well that it just it's 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 just, it's just odd. It's very odd at night. And if you're indoors, the fluorescent lights, all the lighting, everything, it just, it just does weird things with the color. And, and I didn't, I don't, I haven't got any response from anybody yet that says I love this indoor. So that's, you know, that's all I got to go by, by on that one. Welcome, Leo. Glad you could join us. <clears throat> so here in the military, we talked about um, BMNT and EENT. So beginning of morning nautical twilight and end of evening nautical twilight. That's the 30 minutes before sunrise and the 30 minutes after sunset. So how does HD gold take advantage of that low light situation and make it better? With the Trivex lens material, along with the medical dye that we use, it's bringing in more light than your eyes ever experienced before. And let me tell you what I mean by that. Everybody has heard of plastic lenses. Everybody has heard of polycarbonate. But everybody, you know, 80% of, maybe that's probably high, 75% of the population is wearing one of the two styles. Small percentage is still using glass, which is the best optics out there. And then there's Trivex. Trivex is a high-end optic that was designed in 2001 or 2002. Always, just my mind's not right right now. And it was designed by PPG Industries out of um, Pittsburgh, and they designed it for being in the cockpit of fighter jets because it allows it's lighter and stronger than plastic or polycarbonate, but it allows 43% more light to pass through the lens itself than polycarbonate does. So it brought more light to the controls. Okay. That got involved and in, adapted into the optical industry about a year or two after that as well as a, in, and the, it's a very expensive lens compared to the plastic or polycarbonate. So unfortunately, there's still a lot of optometrists, even in the Southeast, that all they prescribe is poly. Poly, 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 polycarbonate. That's all they do. You talk to them about Trivex. You talk to them about the advantages of the more light in the eyes. And but the, uh, most of your optometrists and ophthalmologists are not interested in paying the extra price that it costs to get that. Cause you know, if that cost difference is let's say $25 to the doctor himself, then you're looking at a 50 to 75 increase to the patient. Cause optics are marked that up, marked up that much as a whole. So that's some doctors that are very forward thinking, get it. And a lot of doctors in the industry just don't want to, you know, they already think they're charging too much anyway, having to compete with Walmart and everybody else. And I get it, but it's still not giving the best optics available to the customers. And what we have found out, you know, through the processes we do, when we make somebody a pair of Hunter's HD Gold, you know, we open them up to the family where if you ever need your regular glasses made as well, you could buy wholesale direct from us as well. So we've been having we've been doing a lot of that as well because people put on hunters hd gold and they're and they on the prescription they say this is better than a doctor's prescription that he gives me and i'm like going 80 percent of the time when i get the response i said well, where do you get your glasses at and it's 80 percent of the time walmart costco bj these you know where you know the, these cheaper warehouse places that are not using 
the best optics out there because they're trying to keep their price points low based on what they're doing. It's still good optics. People can see. But when you put on truly top of the line optics, it's like taking an entry line scope going into a Swarovski. You know, you're you're just it's just a big difference. And we're giving that same experience to some people for the very first time in their entire life and not being able to see this good. And all, with all this technologies of Hunter's HD Gold, you know, we can also use the same technologies without the without the gold dye and different technologies and still give people, you know, people have bought two or three pairs of glasses from me on their regular glasses compared to what their normal one pair would cost at the doctor's office. So wow. we're excited to, you know, take that um, and go directly to the public with that as well. So that's another thing that we, you know, we do. And um, Chris Connell, my assistant, who is at the office when I'm not, and which is a lot when I'm always traveling during the shooting season, he is, um, He's the ones answering the phone calls and getting everybody's prescriptions right. He's an um, ABO certified optician in the state in the state of Alabama and been doing this for over 20 years. And has taken it upon himself to learn about the shooting sports and how people are holding their guns and how people are shooting in different shooting disciplines. So when he gets somebody on the phone with iron sights or carry or carry optics, and they don't want to have to tilt their head back to get in that part of the reading part, he knows how to raise that seg height and get it right where people are still shooting, you know, like they're supposed to not have to lift the head up to get into the reading part. So um, that's, a, I'm very proud because that's one of these things that, you know, a lot of optometrists and ophthalmologists that are out there know how to write a shooting. And we've highlighted a lot of those doctors on the new Hunter's HD Gold website of where to find a friendly doctor. And what I mean by friendly is what you know what friendly is in our, in our community and what friendly means. So they are doctors that know how to write those prescriptions. So um, if you know a friendly doctor, you know, as well, there's a there's a place on that page on the website to submit it to us so we can get them added to the website as well. So other people around you can find those doctors to get the prescriptions right. Because I do tell people all the time it matches Hunter's HD Gold prescription is only as good as your prescription. So if your prescription's off, you know, Hunter's HD Gold is going to be off. But the way we do it, we have a really um, hassle-free experience on getting your prescription. And um, we make it where you don't pay a dime until you're happy. So it's it's a pretty neat process. And I didn't necessarily, and maybe I just missed it on your website, but I know that you also will fit lenses to other people's frames. Like I have aim cam. And you and I have spoken, and you can actually create lenses to go in my glasses. Yes, we can. And Hunter's HD Go Custom we rolled out a while back because for the first two years I was doing matches, and every match I go to, I usually give away a custom pair of Hunter's HD Go. Stop by the tent, and it's always a frame that I picked up at one of my local optometrist or ophthalmologist here and I put Hunter's HD gold lens in it. Kind of like, well, you know what I'm wearing. This is not a safety frame. It's a regular frame you buy at the doctor's office and I put my lenses in it. So that's kind of the stuff I give away at matches that I go to. Now, by doing that, I was testing two things. One, because um, some people get them and use them for shooting. I wanted to see how things were going to hold up. wanted to see, you know, what that process looked like because based on the Trivex material and everything we're doing, it's still the same safety thickness in the lens. It's still the same everything, but it's not a Z87 plus. So I can't put an, I cannot put an ANSI rated lens into a non rated frame. If that makes any sense. Okay. So, um, so I'm putting the same lenses in the frames like I've got now, but they don't have the ANSI markings up in the corner that you know that say uv you know six plus which is this you know ultraviolet you know protection um uv protection um v is for the variable um tint because it goes from a light golden color to a dark golden brown and the six plus is on a rating scale i think there's i think it goes up to eight but six is the rating based on light transmittance and everything else not light transmittance what was it um hardness i can't remember it's 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 something i, I looked at once and i got away with it and it's at the plus has to do with the um, the um, velocity test, everything else, because 
Um, the ANSI standard 2020 rating lenses means a quarter inch steel ball at 150 feet per second hitting that lens is not going to um, go through the lens. So that's what we get tested for. So it's um, it's a neat process when you go through all that because we were doing this and this and we we're doing all the processes and I did a um, hard coat at one time and a different kind of hard coat. This hard coat would fail. This hard coat would pass. It's a whole process when you go try to get something ANSI right. And by doing that, you know, it's, you don't just send two lenses, have a good day. You send like four of lenses on four different um, platforms. And it's, it's like 32 lenses total that you got to send out plus a $1,800 fee. It's just crazy. So a lot oh, of stuff nice. out there to get, go through ANSI right. You want to change one. Here's another link. 32 more lenses without another formula. So we went through a lot of lenses to figure out what would work and what would not work to pass ANSI standards. So it's crazy. Wow. That is kind of crazy. It's a, it's a big deal. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, I had somebody call me the other day and he goes, what is, why are your lenses just so much better? And if you don't want to tell me it's okay. I said, no, it's, it's on the website but people don't know how to look into it even more to study it. It's every lens is cut one at a time on a generator down to the 0 0.001 millimeter. That is Plano lenses with no prescription or your prescription lenses. It's the exact same process. So when you're looking through optics that are cut to that detail, even with no prescription, that's why the optics are so much better. Because there are a lot of great frame companies out there. Some of those frame companies use some really good, you know, lens material. And some of them are just using some basic stuff that's stamped out hundreds at a time. And, and you know, and that an injection molding process on the lenses. And it's just a whole, you know, injection molding stamped out process. And those lenses are created with no kinds of, you know, compared compared to what we do on each lens being covered. So that's where the detail comes from. And, and the more those, you know, the, that, that process being with even non-prescription is just, that's what, that's what's so much different than any other lens that's out there on the market. Cause I'm in the lens business and that's everybody else is in the frame business. And this is the lens we get based on where we get it from. Does that make any sense? It, absolutely. Yeah. It's well, not a cookie cutter operation. Yeah, it's so not I, yeah, it's actually a question that I had that I had written down and I don't just because I came in late, so I apologize. I had to put my kids to bed. Um so are you with so you're you're a lens company, but are you are you a custom lens company or are you a lens company that does custom work? Like in we're, your mind. We are a lens company that all we do on a daily basis is make lenses for ophthalmologists, not Thomas's throughout the southeast. Okay. That's that's our job. Our, our that is how we do that's what's been happening since 1977 so you know what i'm looking i'm gonna get a picture of lens real quick i'll show you a picture on my phone you know there's there's stuff all over social media you can see but for your viewers that are watching you know when i talk about doing one lens at a time you know that's everything before it goes into ar coding and you know each lens is on there one at a time and um there's and so you know, yeah, you're right. When you, you know, we do, we do an average of 200 and about 250 to 300 jobs a day. And that's customers you come in through with their lenses. Okay. So there are people that touch each lens before it goes through its final process. So it's just not, you know, two people back there doing a thing. This is a full operation with a major payroll um, that, you just can't get anybody down the street to do what they're doing back in the back. My lab for us, he's been working there longer than I have, 20 something years. And he's managing the lab. He's doing a lot of stuff. But if anything goes down and breaks, he's actually back there fixing it as well. He's learned how to work on these products. And just like any other manufacturing place, like making a gun or, you know, making anything, stuff breaks. You don't know how to fix it. You got downtime. And he knows how to, you know, fix it. He knows how to get in there and make things happen. And it's just an amazing process. But no, one thing we will be doing, and we do it every day, 
if you're ever in town, but we're going to do it during national. All the stuff, all the events are going to be held at the CMP since we're only 45 minutes away. If anybody ever wants to come do a lab tour, I won't be there, but Chris will be there every day, you know, and let people and be and show people, you know, the whole process of how Hunter's HD Gold is made and how every lens is made for that matter. And it's an amazing process to see it happen. So it's it's something that you know. That's all we do is lenses. That that's it. And every job to answer your question, Leo, every job is a custom job. So that's yeah, the thing. There you go. I have people all the time who say, Hey, you made me some um lenses for my ride-ons. I want to get some new lenses. Can you just make the pattern again? I'm like, no, you actually need to send your frame in again because we actually have to we will use the original lenses to get a starting point, but at the very finishing point, if that lens has been in there for a long time. And it comes out, the other lens we cut is going to be looser. So it's actually a custom right. for that frame all over again. Because we make them for, you know, oak leads and different things where lenses come out. Tell people, you don't want to be taking these lenses in and out. Because all that's yeah. doing is rubbing a frame and taking that off the frame. That You're not going to be able to replace that frame if something happens and you're going to be stuck with some lenses. So mm -hmm. when we make a um, they will come out, but I always tell people, well, I want to get some lenses. Where, you know, man, if you just go spend the, the, the extra hundred bucks on some new Oakley's, you know, based on your discounts through LE discounts, all that stuff, just because you don't want to be switching these in and out, get a brand new frame. You want to make it where you're done. Now you ain't got to worry about it. So it's okay. every. Now, love it. I, I have one more technical question and I'll let Leo Leo has a bunch of questions he's got recorded. Um, my last question is, since you're a, an optics guy, meaning on your rifle too, I see you put an anti-reflective coating on your lenses. Yes. Okay. Um, again, uh, my past dealing with rifle scopes, they used to put a Heller coating, high efficiency, low reflective, to allow light transmission in blocks other stuff is that a similar type coating we're talking about here or it is um it's a it's an ar coating or design for one thing it's designed for is um aesthetics okay I'm, i got an ar coating on my lenses now and you can see my eyes yes if you, you can't see mine AR, you can tell when you are <laughs> coating because it reflects light okay it makes light pop off and you don't you can't see as much so when you go do an eye exam this 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 frustrates me so bad because it happens all the time when you go do an eye exam you're looking through all these optics what is better one or two a or b all these questions right you're looking through lenses inside this machine that has an ar coating then when you go out to the doctor's office and talk to the optician if there's not a good doctor optician handoff you're going now based on what the optician wants to give you and mm. not talk not going through the process of what, what happens. Now, the reason I know this so much in detail, once a quarter, I teach a class at, at the United UAB um, School of Optometry. And I talk to fourth year students. And the professor who wanted me to do this class, I do a class on marketing and sales to fourth year students in the optical industry who don't care anything in the world about selling or, or marketing. But they go to school for four years, sometimes six. They get all this information, have all these visions of grandeur and retirement to be a doctor. Then they do all this work on the eye exams. They do all this stuff to make sure they have the best equipment, the best everything. Then they send them out to the lobby to talk to an optician who's making minimum wage. And then they wonder why they're not making any money. Because what I've learned through teaching this class, only 20 to 30% of an optometrist total income comes from my exams. The, the other 70 to 80% is made on their sales floor. Wow. Selling photochromics, selling AR coatings, selling polycarbon over plastic, selling Trivex over polycarbonate, upsells, 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 upsells. I've been in the sales game since I was 21 years old. I just turned 50 last December. All I've done is sales. 
So trying to explain this to a fourth-year student about selling and marketing, I've 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 upset fourth-year students. I've had students walk out before. Wow. Often because I'm very aggressive when I'm talking to these people. I know I'm so passionate about it because I see so many doctors that are going to go get their own practice, get started, end up working at Walmart to make their ends meet because they can't do it on their own. Mm. So, so what I'm very aggressive in their in their training class, and I'll stop them before they get to the door every time, and I'll say, just remember, when you woke up this morning and got dressed, you sell yourself every day. And you think about that. And I leave it with them every time because selling's not a bad thing because there's nothing in the optical industry that people sell that is bad for your eyes. <laughs> I mean, photochromics are great. AR coatings are great. Dyes are great based on different situations. But the problem always happens on that end is doctors aren't asking lifestyle questions. So if a doctor would ask somebody, well, what do you do? <laughs> Are you a hobbyist that likes to go hunt? Are you a hobbyist that shoots? Are you a fishing guy? Because you need some prescription polarized glasses. Are you, you know, there's different things for different applications to get something more than what insurance covers. Because as us as consumers, we dealt with it. I dealt with it for 10 years before I got in the optical industry. Is we want what our insurance covers and get me out of here because I don't want to wear these things anyway. That's okay. That that's the but if somebody would actually stop me before then. You could have this visual experience with all these other activities that you do. And that's when a, a true optometrist can really start, you know, capturing that customer never to go anywhere else. And now with what we're doing with Hunter's HD Gold and actually making glasses for people that are in Hunter's HD Gold, or they're every day, but they want regular glasses, we're, 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 we're asking those lifestyle questions. So we're getting directly going direct to the public to buy wholesale and, and try to overcome those objections to build more eyewear into people's what they're doing. Because if you fish, Hunter's HD Gold is not for you. They, they, are, they have a lot of stuff in them, but they're not polarized. If you've ever done any fishing before, polarization cuts that water three to six feet. So you can actually see in the water what's going on when you're, when you're, when you're fishing. It makes a big difference. So there's a lot of things out there in the optical industry we could talk about on the nerdy side. But it gets me easily fired up on doctors when I try to explain something to them, how to help them. They're, they're both nerds. We don't mind. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you yes. know, it's fine. <laughs> We're okay. Yes. But, you know, it's it's so funny that you said that because uh, I went to my optometrist not too long ago and I tried to explain that, you know, I shoot indoor archery as well and, you know, competitively as well. And I try to explain get the gold the dots on my on my my scope. Yes. <laughs> and I try to explain everything like that. Also, I, t I try to explain them like, hey, look, I shoot pistol competitively also. Get the gold. They lenses. were like. Yeah. <laughs> so they were like, you're answering you know, your like, own question. Uh, <laughs> right. And so, you know, they had no clue. And yep. by, the, by the end, when I walked out, go ahead. Did you, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry to interrupt. Did you have this conversation with your doctor or with your optician? With the doctor. Okay. And the, and, and the doctor who is not familiar with it or with the sports and everything was like, oh, okay, I'll just crisp this up a little bit. How's that? And then have a nice day. <laughs> it's yeah. like a potato yeah. chip. Yeah. And that's... And 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 here's where I challenge you next time, Chris. Your doctor may be the great doctor in the world, but you need to shop for other doctors. And that's why we put what we put on the website oh, yeah. out there. Because just like you shop for groceries to, to get your right experience and all your shopping needs at one place, you need to shop for your optician the exact same way. And, you know, mm -hmm. the more you shop and more you ask questions, because if you had the conversation with your doctor, and then went out on the floor and talked to the optician, and there and there's not that handoff. Then you're, you're still you got two things. One, you got to explain it over again, and one, we already know you didn't want to be there to begin with, so you're not even going to take the time. It's like, no, never mind, just get me out of here. So that's that's right. the, the problem in the optical industry because I've I've talked to optometrists that are shooters, and there's a lot of great shooters that are optometrists and vice versa, and they go, "How did you?" I said, "Well, I'll be honest with you." 
and don't please don't take this the wrong way, but if more optometrists were doing their job correctly, I wouldn't have to be here. Exactly. But well, we'd miss you. <laughs> well, I, well <laughs> oh, believe it, because they what, what I sell it to the, the public for is what the wholesale cost is to the doctor. So okay. that's what I understand. If you went to the if you went to your optometrist and you wanted to buy a hunter's HD gold, not a prescription. And you told them the six or seven things, or seven things that are in that lens. You're looking at 500, 550 bucks minimum all day long from your optometrist. And if you have a prescription, that that number can get to eleven to twelve hundred dollars very quickly with all the upgrades we do on there. I'm out. So yep. for for three seventy five for a prescription and a, um and map pricing on non prescription for three hundred. It, it's where it needs to be, but I'm telling you, it's it's still expensive because people aren't used to spending money on iPro, and that I dealt with that. The first six months I was going to matches, nobody talked to me. It was okay. I got through it. I'm in sales. <laughs> Your job is <laughs> not until somebody says no. <laughs> so it's it was okay, but I educate people about lenses like we've done some tonight, and that's why I do demo days everywhere I go. Because I want people to just go try it and you come back to me and tell me what you like or don't like about it. And we do the same thing on the prescription side. You get to try it. We actually make your prescription up front and you get to try it before you even buy it, even with your prescription. That, ain't nobody doing that. Because my wife yeah. thought, I, my wife thought, she goes, you've lost your mind. She goes, I got doctors that don't even pay. I said, shooters are not doctors. And this is a brand new product. Everybody and their mother can say this is the best thing out there. But if this guy's always been paying eight dollars and ninety nine cents for a pair of shooting glasses just to get them by, he's not going to understand the process of what we do to a lens until I get to educate them. And I can't educate them unless they're wearing it and ask questions. And she said, "Okay, it worked." <laughs> but Sold it was her. Boom. <laughs> it was, it, she she said she well yeah but it, it you know i was <laughs> <laughs> it's like when yeah, you have to yeah. marry you like i oh, will see exactly where's that compromise again <laughs> 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 now once 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 people experience them and once people see what's in them and based on, like you said before, every job is a custom job. It's just, you know, it's it's the details are in the details. There you go. Like it. Thank you. Oh, I do. Hey, Dave, are you muted? Yeah. You can't hear you. I get, you look. <laughs> but I will. I will. I. I I will say, Brian, I love the glasses. Uh, they actually it was funny. Leo and Dave were pointing the fact that you were saying about how some of the shooters, you know, have to raise their head up to look. And I am that guy, you know, because the Man. I will say I wear contacts and when I'm shooting and the bifocals are on the bottom so I can see the dot, you know, so I'm always constantly ra raising my head up. So. And they always laughed at me. They were always sitting there going like, why are you raising your head up, Huggy? I'm like, so I can see? <laughs> and it, so, it, it, you know, Chris, like I said, he has studied the shooting sports enough and, and talking to me, We he's he's got it pretty much down pat. And that's one reason, you know, there's still that customer that says, I like this, but I need this. And let's, well, send them back. Let me remake them. We'll, we'll, we'll get it right. So we go through that process to make sure that um, every eyeball is different. That's one thing, you know, in the optical industry, there's no, it's like a fingerprint. No two eyeballs are exactly the same. You know, you know, David can go over there and say, oh, let me see your reader, your readers, Chris, or your glasses. I can see something, but you, you can't wear those all the time because two eyeballs are not the same. It can do, it's really bad for you to do that over time. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. So I definitely am looking forward to, uh, experiencing some of these HD goals, uh, especially to help improve my state. <laughs> so, Good yeah, deal. sorry, go ahead. 
No, don't go ahead. I don't know what happened. Sixteen. Uh, you hear me? I don't know. He froze and disappeared. Yeah, it's. So he's answered eight, eight, ten, and sixteen. Eight, ten, and, and 16. sixteen. Okay. Cool. Well, <laughs> that. So based on that, uh, so you've talked a lot about marketing and sales and whatnot. So how how do you do your market research? And then how much input do you have, do you get from customers that goes into that and, and you say, okay, these are things that we either need to improve or adjust or what have you. How I got my research to start with was just going to matches. And okay. then that didn't start in the USPSA world at all. When I first got started doing this, I'd met a gentleman named Larry Joe Steedley Jr. who came to my hunting property and saw the lenses I had there at the hunting property and used them for a little bit, wanted to sit and ask a lot of questions. And we became friends. And he got me into shooting um, a shooting sports called SAS, you know, Single Action Shooting Society, which I'm still a member of. Um, my, um, alias is light bender. So I'll let you figure that one out. Um, <laughs> and he got me doing that. And that's where, you know, some of the, you know, the other guns come behind me where I did single action shooting before. And through that process, Hunter's HD Gold was already there. They didn't have a name yet. And I was using them to shoot with and then which just like when you try them out a demo a match how do you like those what do you you know you get the same questions i was being asked when i just made them for myself and they work great in shooting sass because you're shooting steel very close and you're shooting still the shotgun very very close so there's a lot of ricochets that were always happening off the lenses got a lot of testing on that um <laughs> This is part of the sport. Yeah. Um, and Larry had not created Steel Target Paint yet. So that's who Larry Joe Steely Jr. is on Steel uh, Target Paint. And he's here in Pelham with me as well. So he said, I'm thinking about creating paint for these steel targets because this paint is not any good. You need to think about doing something with your lenses. I'm like, great idea i'll see you later on and it didn't think about it <laughs> because i'm like this is not on my no i thought about the hunting industry and getting into that and i dabbled to that a little bit but if mama and daddy didn't do it growing up we ain't gonna do it so <laughs> there's a lot of major objections of the hunting area and i was like okay fine this is just something that's cool that i'll leave it alone and do it locally i'm not stressed out about it because i'm making a good living with the lab I'm working with now doing their marketing and stuff. Fast forward about four months, maybe longer, not four months. I think it's about four months. Larry calls me up, says putting a shooting team together. I'm like, what? What do you mean? For SAS? They don't have, <laughs> cause I didn't know any other shoot. I didn't know the shooting sports even existed. He goes, no, no, there's a steel target you know shooting us or some you know some kind of shooting association all this stuff that he's putting together i'm like oh all right what do you want me to do he goes well we're getting jerseys made and i think we got seven or eight people you know we'll put your logo on the jersey and give them you'll do glasses for them and i said i don't have a logo or a name <laughs> what do you what what do you mean and that's when I created the logo and everything in about 48 hours. <laughs> so it's changed a little bit since then, but this, the basis of the logo are still the same today that we created and came up with a name. Um, the lens was designed for hunters. So that, that was easy. Um, the HD is from, because every lens is cut one at a time on a high definition generator, like we talked about, down to the 0 0.001 millimeter, and they're gold. That was easy. <laughs> so <laughs> it, was, it was a process going. 
So basically, but that's they a keep it simple <laughs> philosophy right there, and I like it. If, like, and it, <laughs> it tells and, you what it is. Exactly. But knowing me, I'm in marketing and advertising and other stuff, dabble everything. I like logos. I like how the FedEx thing is hidden with a with a pointing to the right. I like how the Fiesta chips has the two people hidden in it. I like all the hidden stuff about logos. But what do I do? Take a logo, take the, you know, Hunter's, you know, HD and put the HD in the middle and it looks like Hunter's Gold. Well, Hunter's Gold is a, another company that sells deer supplements. So that was out of the question. <laughs> and nobody was <laughs> on it Hunter HD Gold. They just called it Hunter's Gold. And so I was like, or Hunter's H, you know, that. so then last year and a little bit, and this year now we have it actually spelled out Hunter's HD gold. And after doing more podcasts, hearing people say it over and over again, it's starting to rhyme more that there's actually HD in the middle there. Cause if you go to Hunter's gold.com, it's some supplement company that's in um, the South and they didn't want to sell their website a long time ago. And I went with Hunter's HD gold instead. <laughs> Cause it was just going to be, <laughs> but it could be as bad as going to whitehouse.com. No, that's been so uh, Yeah. <laughs> that's, been a, that's yeah, not good. It's awkward. Yeah, it a is. little bit. <laughs> we'll get through it. It'll be okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll get there, people. It's, it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. So is that how you then transitioned from uh, just the single action to going to USPSA? Or is this different? into the um the um i can't think of it steel challenge shooting association but look okay. I, I started still challenge shooting okay i did when i got started and started off with you know the steel target paint shooting team mm -hmm. and that was in 17 and then i went to a couple of matches but i didn't have a 10 or anything i went to the world rimfire shoot that was up in alabama north alabama that year went to a couple of matches at the um the CMP, they were doing some local matches, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Met a lot of the shit. And I met at the World, at the 2017 or 2018 Rimfire Championship. I don't remember which one it was. I met Brian with Tandem Cross, the owner of Tandem Cross. And he had a tent set up and him and, you know, they were there doing all the stuff they do. And I said, I need to know what matches I need to go to. And I talked to um, Michael Bain and asked him the same questions. What matches do I need to go to? And they gave me a list of like seven matches to go to in 2018. Okay. And based on going to one match and meeting everybody else, have you ever been heard of this match? Have you heard of this and heard of this and heard of this? And then that turned into... I did 32 matches last year, even with COVID. So <laughs> wow. that's actually, but wow. what I found, what I found out going to these matches and to do the, get back to your original question, market research was to let people try them before they bought them. I went and did demo days at the very beginning to get feedback from the shooters. So what they liked about it and what they didn't like about it. So that was live wear testing the feedback because i had no clue when i first started doing this i'd be where i'm at four years later like i am now so we are um very excited to be um a part of the shooting community now we're very proud to be the um official eye where the steel challenge shooting association and the United states practical shooting association so um that's a whole other story there how that came about at the nine days of nationals but um that's it's one of those things that um I talked to Mike and I said, There's a lot of people that's been around a lot longer than me. You sure you want me to do this? And they've all had opportunities, they didn't do it. I said, Oh, it's my I'll do it. <laughs> there you go. You snooze, you lose. <laughs> because I got in there when he asked me that, it really it's it it that was the biggest that was the only the second USPSA match I'd been to. The first one was a Mississippi Classic that summer. And then they said, You going to the nine days of nationals. I was like, well, oh, nine days of work. Do what? <laughs> and I went to Frostproof for 11 days straight, 
And I said, if I can make it here, I can make it doing anything. <laughs> how well, how New York, New York right there. <laughs> how well that were you kid, received? Um, there was a, I, a gentleman named Luigi Lee out of Miami, who I met at the Mississippi Classic, and some other USPSAers that I met. And I was received extremely well. And what I mean by that is a lot of the not of the big shooters had no idea who I was. However, with the Luigi's, the Dupuis, and so many other people that I'd met very aggressively saying, you need to try this. I had demos flying all over the place for those nine days. And it's really what, you know, got me doing everything where I was at, you know, in 2019 and last year as well. And what's kept, what's kept me continue to go even. So it's, it's the, it's just nobody ever, you know, I'm a consumer myself. So when you see that company out of nowhere, you've never seen before, I'm going to go dabble a little bit, but. Right. There's, but there's trepidation. You're not like, yep, I'm going right into it without any knowledge. But, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, at Steel Challenge matches, nobody, like I said, I didn't get talked to for almost six months. Nobody knew who I was. And that's okay. Um, at some point, they had to realize, like, all right, I got that people tell me this. Okay, you're, you've been here for this is the third match I've seen. I'm going to talk to you now. You know, I mean, so persistency paid off by just, you know, I, I, I've been in sales, like I said, since I was 21. When you tell me no, it don't hurt my feelings. It just means that's when I got to go to work. So I love that, by the way. That makes it, I don't know why that just give me a, a good feeling on the inside. I said earlier, I think before you got on, er, you know, everybody can be a salesman, but nobody's job starts until that person says no. Yeah. I so, love that. Uh oh. Um, but you know, I think I I think I answered both question. Yeah. Based on that, if not, we can revisit the second. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, because I remember the first time I ever met you was at Shadowhawk up in West Virginia, Randy and Lynn's, but I didn't actually get a chance to talk to you. And the 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 second time I met you was actually at Nationals with, with Dave, and that's when we actually got a chance to talk. Um, not that I didn't want to talk to you the first time, but, you know. Life is busy. There's, you know, after a match, there's places to go eat and things to start drinking. It's all good. I don't know what the shooters Truth. Do. Oh, that's very true. Yes, Leo. Yes, that is very true, isn't it? You know, we don't got to bring this up every time. It hurts more the more we bring it up. Um, day, I don't want to. It's not you. It's him. He knows. Just being hurtful. Yeah. Rude. Oh, I'm telling you right now, it, it was it was wonderful, and it was a great experience. Uh huh. <laughs> finally wanted something you're gonna live it up um so right. actually, and speaking to how much traveling that you have you did and that you've done like you travel a lot like yes, I, I I, i've on your instagram i've seen you in all over the place and then the time like again i've met you in west virginia and i met you in florida do you like that part of it because you're always smiling so either you're really good at smiling or you actually like all the travel oh no, i i I do okay. explain that to you. When I'm at the office every day, my mind is always going. There's things to do, things to catch up on, you know, here and there. So when I'm in the car, two things happen. One, I get to relax and get there. And the second thing I always do is listen to podcasts, the shooting sports, everywhere I go. Makes time go by extremely fast. And when I'm at matches, I love being there, seeing everybody. But if it's a long match or even not even a long match, if it's a, a weekend match, that Sunday, you know, when the when the, when everybody's starting to cut down and go for the award ceremonies, sometimes you don't see me at the award ceremony because I'm ready to get home. Yeah. So it's works both ways. But my my wife's very supportive. It's been she knows what she didn't know. I didn't know we doing so much, but she knew I had to get out there to get branding done and let people know what's really going on because throwing a $300 pair of safety glasses, somebody without any education at all, it's not going to work. 
especially on somebody we've never even heard of. We've been doing, we've been shooting for 10 years. So how can, how come, how can somebody just come out of the middle of nowhere and create a need that we didn't know we needed? So that we've done, but it's me being there at the matches to build the relationships, talk to everybody and have fun doing it. I mean, my job does not suck on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> Ours sucks on the weekends. Yeah. Ask me all yeah. the time. Yeah. Mark, I've said, well, you don't look very happy right now. And that's one reason, <laughs> but no, no. If I, I, I'm a true believer of you can only do one thing. Great. You can do a lot of things. Good. If you can do one thing. Great. And if I took the time, if I, I shot SAS for a while and, I got started and I was competitive and I didn't like being at the bottom all the time. So uh, just, you know, it's one of those things that I, the same thing would happen in the shooting sports. If I got involved in it, I'm going to want to go at it. And if I'm not, you know, I'm already walking away from the tent now because I'm doing live videos when nobody, I, I figured out the shooting sports when, when it's a good time to be close by and a, and a good time. Okay. It's time to go get some footage. To do. I have noticed that by the way, you do that very well. Well, thank you. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, I was looked at the Instagram. I'm like, if if that was at a different time, or if that was somebody else, they'd be like, "Why are you Why are you talking in my backswing?" Kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so one of those things that when we started that, and we're doing, we're going to do a lot more this year because I finally got a thousand subscribers on YouTube. We're going to do a lot of YouTube live at events this year. Awesome. Because you know, some people aren't going out and shooting as much matches because of. Um, everything because of ammo and mm -hmm. name this, the reasons why it's not just the price. It's just, the, it's just the every, everything involved right now. They're not traveling as much, but to be able to bring that to everybody in a way that it won. Um, so I don't want to snack and eat like every other human being when you're bored. Um, I get to go out there and be with the shooters, work on my vitamin D and and just have fun and and you know when i first started doing it i didn't get the video much because people were asking me a lot of questions all the time about the lens and everything else and i didn't want to do that because i don't want to go out there and have to sell a product where you're you know trying to focus on the stage plan but they you came to me i didn't come to you i'm trying to do something else and you came to me so it's but i i'm aware of my surroundings you know i know not to go say to Max Michelle or pretty much anybody two 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 shooters down because his eyes are closed and he's going through his motions. You know, I know I've learned enough about the sport. Another reason why I became an RO was to learn even more about the sport. That's why when you see my footage, all the ROs that are there pretty much know I'm an RO as well. And I always tell them, I know where not to be. Okay. <laughs> and I get some different angles on shooters and their shooting that other shooters don't want to do or don't do because they don't really, you know, the other ROs don't want them to be there. So I'm not an RO when I go to the match. I've had to do a couple of RO things at matches before, but I'm not, a, I'm not a RO at the match, but it's one of those things where I want to become an RO. So if, if somebody says, Hey, I got to run to the restroom, run, run the tablet. I got to do this. Can you do this real quick? Can you run the shooter real fast? Then I can just fill in at any time and help somebody. That was another reason why I want to be an RO to help support the sport. And that, that happens more than you think. Um, but to be able to record and be able to, you know, stream stuff like we did last year at nationals to carry the, you know, the, the fall of the, the super squads during the final days when we saw JJ and Christian going back and forth, I got a lot of people calling me, you know, thanking me to, that they weren't able to attend to be able to watch that. And it's actually generated a lot of interest from other people now to try to, you know, make that even bigger than what I'm doing, which is awesome. I, I think that's exciting for the sport and the future of it. And, you know, do I ever, do I ever see us on ESPN? I don't know. There's still guns and we're still living. We've that talked society. about it. We but have talked it, about it. But one of those things where, you know, well, I've talked to Jake about it and actually Mike, and they have a lot of big plans that they were getting ready to do with a company, but one of the school shootings happened and they got dropped. Production company dropped them in a heartbeat. So, you know, anything gun related, when things are good, things are good. But, if, you know, if all of a sudden you got ESPN showing USPSA and all of a sudden there's a, another tragedy in Vegas, 
they're not going to show that show the next day. You know, you you just your show just got canceled because it, yeah. it's an emotional thing that the press and the um, government turns it into, and that's just kind of the what we're dealing with every day on this. But through the YouTube channel, we're doing it through education. We're doing it to educate people on gun safety. And I've read the rules of YouTube. I've read them twice. I've had other people read them to me. And as long as we're not trying to sell a certain gun or promote the sale of a certain accessory or anything else gun related, and we're doing it to show people the sports and everything else, we ain't gonna have any problems. And I've got a lot of videos out there with a lot of hours watched and a lot of views, over a hundred thousand views. So, you know, it's one of those things that we'll see what happens. And if I have to go make a Hunter's HD gold only fans page, we will, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would subscribe. To well, <laughs> well, I think maybe even we might have to go with the fact that, Hey, might have to come up with our own type of uh, internet service provider and, you know, standalone where it has to be showing just nothing but USPSA shooting events and uh, other shooting sports where it's on there. And then people can subscribe to that or can go to that. I guarantee you once that happens, then you'll see, uh, you know, people open up. Yep. And the best way we can do that right now is watching on Wednesday nights when Shooting USA comes out because that is the only show that supports and reports on the shooting sports. And that's one reason mm -hmm. that I'll to share you about it. And this year um, we're signed up to advertise with them this year on, on Shooting USA. And that was a big awesome. drop. And um, Sherry says, well, I'll pay for that, but I'm not paying for your custom van to go travel in. And I was like, oh, all right, I'll use my credit cards. <laughs> Trade off. Well, that actually kind of answers one of the other questions that I had was what are the partnerships do you have that are coming down the pipe? Um, so I guess I don't have to ask that question. Well, no, it's, uh, that's the biggest one we did. We, we we released Hunter's HD Ruby on the Shooting USA show back on the 17th. Okay. And um, everybody knew it was going to happen that we're wearing it and everything else. They said, you can talk about it tomorrow. You know, this show airs at eight o'clock um, central time. And, you know, he, he dropped it right after the new Leopold optic, you know, red dot. And it was the next segment and it blew up, you know, website traffic went crazy. Had a lot of people in the shotgun world who never even heard of me before mm -hmm. were contacting me the new lens. So, so far it's working great. We're going to do a lot more segments. Um, with them throughout the year. Um, Mark Reddle, who shoots with Colt, is mm -hmm. wearing Hunter's Gold now when he does his um, shooting sport, the, um, the the trips and tips thing, whatever they mm -hmm. do. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And, and he'll be wearing Hunter's HD Gold, and he can wear those now. And if he actually says anything like Hunter's HD Gold works great indoors shooting, you know, that's going to be allowed because I'm actually advertising with him as well. So there's a lot of things that's going to open the doors to more shooting sports to be able to do that. But if, if the reason I'm saying what you can do to help is support and watch that show is because the more people that watch it, the ratings go up, the more the ratings go up, the outdoor channel goes, okay, this went from 5 million to 10 million. View. What, what do you, what do we, what's going on here? And if ratings get higher, it gets attention. And then that's what can take it to a, you know, the putting cornhole on ESPN during a pandemic. Boom. <laughs> That's America oh, right there. I love it. Porn I love on it. ESPN. Love it. Dave's indignant. Yes, I just got real happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so kind of to speak to that, because I know you, you have brand ambassadors. So how much does like having those ambassadors help you um, versus, you know, having a segment on Shooting USA? And then how does one earn the ability to become a brand ambassador? Not that Huggy what? really wants to be one. But a little bit. Well, I, I just got through sending out some challenge coins that I had made for the ambassadors. Now, let me back up real quick. Hunter's HD Gold does not have a shooting team. Okay. I don't, don't want a shooting team. And I'm, I'm saying with all due respect to people that have shooting teams, but I've listened to all these people that have shooting teams, and I don't want a shooting team. <laughs> now, saying that, I with that announcement or, or justification that I can be friends with anybody. 
I don't care where I go. You know, the way I got started, you know, put my put my logo on your jersey and you get a big discount. <laughs> and that's how that started. And that's all because I caught this advertising dollars. The more, you know, the more you see it, the more you see it. Then all of a sudden, you know, Joe's calling you from TechWare going, who are you? Because everybody's asking for your logo, which is cool. <laughs> that's real cool. <laughs> well, that you didn't know even existed and everything starts happening just based on that simple process of doing that. There's a Hunter's HD Gold owners page. Okay. So on Facebook. So if you're Hunter's HD Gold owner, you go to it, you just you get in there to the group, and that's where everybody talks about anything good, bad, and different about Hunter's HD Gold. If they want to promote their self. It's nothing that's really managed. It's just there. Now it was there for a reason. It started off as a group that was hidden when we first got started. Nobody knew about it unless you had, you know, had unless you had the Hunter's HD Gold in your logo on your jersey and you get discounts and everything else. And after year two and a half or three, I needed to open it up because there's so many people that wear Hunter's HD Gold. I need to get more feedback from the people that have been wearing this since the beginning. So that's why we opened it up to Hunter's HD Gold owners the first of this year and or last year, probably the last year. I don't remember when. Anyway, and all we did is my marketing manager put a post that says, if you'd like to be featured on the Hunter's HD Gold website, I need this, 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 and this by this date. And the 48 people that are on there replied to the post. That's how easy it was. <laughs> now, see, I just, even how you can do that. Just got, I just got through sending out a bunch of challenge coins to everybody that I want to do something this year and work in conjunction with, um, Creekside Customs, which is owned by Steve Foster, doing some laser engravings. And he started talking about these challenge coins. So I was like, this, I'll send them out to all the ambassadors that went, they got on the website. And he's like, cool. And so I helped promote him and help do that. And I sent all these out and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of posts are starting to get posted on Facebook. And, and, and I've had emails like now I'm getting emails and phone calls and messages. How can I be an ambassador? I'm like going, well, go to the Hunter's HD Gold owners page and wait for the post <laughs> because we'll make an announcement again. And I'd love to be up there because my the website is nothing to do but to promote you. I want to promote you as a shooter. There are shooters out there that they actually used a Hunter's, wanted a, wanted a Hunter's HD Gold jersey. I said, I don't have a jersey. Can I get one made? <laughs> Perfect. Have fun. So Techware calls me. Is this okay? This is perfectly okay. Run with it. Then they did that. And then they got recognized by a gun manufacturer. Through me posting all this stuff. About he, the, and here's how my Instagram works. If you tag us, we're going to share it. It's on our story. It's very, it's not, it's not rocket science. If you, yeah, I can promote your brand as much as you want to promote it. Because my job is... To promote the shooter. The more the shooter grows and the more the sport grows, the more Hunter's HD Gold is going to grow. So that's my philosophy with that. My job is to pr promote you individually. That's if you want to be wherever you want to go, I'll help you get there. And this gentleman got contacted by a gun company and he called me. He goes, I got a problem. I said, What's your problem? He goes, Stripling Custom Gun Works wants to sponsor me and send me some guns and want me to wear their shirt. I'm like going, I know Bill. I, what's the, what's the problem? He goes, well, I, I don't know if I can wear your jersey anymore. I said, well, two things. One, I don't care. <laughs> Just got to <laughs> give you a gun to shoot. I didn't do anything like that. <laughs> Fine. And go get the gun. <laughs> and two, I know Bill. and. He, you could put the Hunter's HD Gold smaller anywhere you want to be and be a part of the Stripling shooting team. And that's what he did. But he got noticed because of that process and being out there and somebody wanted to give him a rimfire rifle and let him run with it. He did. So I've done, there's, I've got lots of more stories like that. I'm going to put a number on it. It's over 50 more stories like that where other people have been recognized just by letting us help promote you as a shooter. Because shooting is expensive, you know, and, and it's, it's a it's a very expensive 
hobby that we spend lots and lots and lots of money for to either get a trophy or a wood plaque and bragging rights. And sometimes, you know, if you, you know, there's, there's a small percentage of people that are making a, a living at it. And that's wonderful that they can do that, but it's a small percentage. This is a hobby slash sport for everybody. And people, some people have it a hobby. Some people have it as a sport. Some people are growing it into a training business and it becomes a full-time business and they're very passionate about it. All of those are okay. So to be able to help anybody get where they want to be to help cut some of the cost, I'm glad to be a part of that. And a lot of people's and junior shooters that are have been picked up by bigger major companies just because of a phone call I get from somebody saying, Hey, what do you think about so-and-so? I said, I love this person. That'd be a great pickup for you. And all of a sudden they got an ammunition, you know, deal. And that's wonderful because that's the most expensive part of the sport after you buy your gun. So if you can get, if I can help somebody get an ammunition deal, that's, that's the best feedback I can get from anybody. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the Ark of the Covenant right there. So there you go. That's, 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 that's my thing. It's just the, I, I, we, my job on the ambassadors page is to promote you, you know? So, you know, I the, what do you want me to put on there? What do you want people to read about you? Cause I'm going to link all your social media to it. I'm going to link everything to it. This is about you to grow as a shooter. So whatever you want to put on there, Hunter's AC gold is cool. I'm not going to get you. <laughs> Tell a story. <laughs> I mean, that's nice, but. But it, tell a story. Put, put your resume out there. See what happens. We get a lot of views to the website every day. Um, that's awesome. I, I, I like that. And, and I've, I don't know if it's. I think the, the three of us have all noticed this and we've talked about it on previous episodes and everything like that, that while you have a quasi official, like this is an ambassador and you're trying to, this is a sport where people are very willing to help others get a leg up and very willing to, to say, Hey, you're not at the, uh, an elite level. Like you said, those people that are able to make it a living, be it with training or shooting or being sponsored or whatever. It's one of those few sports where you can have Joe blow, the three of us that aren't you on this show that do it for funsies, but get to compete and participate with elite level shoot like athletes. That is, it's bonkers that you can do that as a normal person to be able to compete with and next to somebody that does it for a living. That is why I smile all the time because before I did what I'm doing now, I love golf. Big golf guy, Hunter Golf, but I love golf. I love watching golf on TV. I got to go to a match. I love golf. Every weekend at nationals or any area event or any major event I go to, it's like being a, at Augusta to see the best of the best compete. And not everybody on that, not, not the top 16, not all of them wear Hunter's HD Golf, but every single one of them know who I am. And that's pretty cool. So that's what that's that's my drive to be like, I'm involved with something and I'm a part of something. And I'm seeing the people that come in that have never shot before and I get to watch them grow. I see people come in that have been doing this for 20 years and they're happy and that's where they're going to be. And that's fine. And I see people come in and all of a sudden they're an RO. And I watch them grow. I see it become a CRO. And I see people grow on that side of the sport. And then I see the elite of the elite that come in. And I'm recording nationals last year. And Christian Seiler takes the time to do commentary. Who won? <laughs> you know, pretty cool. My, like yeah. I said, so the, you know, when I was out for a month and a half, not, no, actually four weeks, four, four weeks officially, not doing any matches. The best thing I loved was hearing those first shots going off, going, I am back home hearing gunfire again. That's what it was all about. So. Only in America. <laughs> and because of that, I become a huge advocate for Second Amendment rights, and I support the Michael Baines, the DC projects, 
the girl in the guns. I support everything and everything that are trying to help our second amendment stay as just as strong as it is now for years and years to come. So, and that's just the way I, I don't have time to go be a part of stuff that happens in other areas, but by going through the shooting sports and growing that side of the sport in return, we see a lot of people come and go in the sport. I've already seen it in three years. I've seen juniors come in that tear things up and all of a sudden they're gone because they got a girlfriend or a boyfriend. And then also they might come back or not. But I can tell you this, every single person that gets into this sport and shoots one match and may put down a gun and may say, this just isn't for me. I bet their percentages are going to be pretty high that that person is always going to vote for the second amendment. That's my, that's my logic. And that's, you know, and that it, the more people that fire that gun more and more in a safe, in a safe way and obey, obeying all the safety rules, they have a love and support for firearms. And if anybody tries to take that away, we know where their vote's going to go. That's, that's my, that's, that, that's what I tell myself every day when I do this, this is, a, this is helping the future of my kids, kids to be able to do what he wants. They want to do when they're my age. Amen. Love it. Love it. Talking to the mic, Dave. Yeah. There, there we go. I keep having background noise, so I have to keep <laughs> muting my mic. I know. I know. <laughs> Tiger Woods walks up to you pre-accident. He says, Brian, I don't have time to try any of these out. Am I using gold or am I using ruby? Which one am I going with? Gold all day long. All right, there we go. Boom. Stamp of approval. You heard it, Tiger. You heard it from me. Tiger, Tiger Woods. <laughs> 100% he listened to the show. And not a sponsor. Awkward. <laughs> Tiger Woods is not a sponsor. Uh, and, and golf right now. I can guarantee he's a fan, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Tiger listens to this show. Yeah, he's We're got lots of time on his hands. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've got anything else. Um, oh, actually, since I wasn't here, I'm assuming we did the whole intro questions. Oh, man. I yep. wish I knew what the answers Star were. Star Wars? Uh, original, I'm assuming. Oh, yes. Oh, come well, on. I've had weirder answers. Trust me. Now, I was was born in 1970, so you know, I was not. First... <laughs> so, not a judgment. I'm a I'm a fan of the originals and not the remastered ones either, like the original originals. Right. Right. So okay. Now okay. his caliber, though, you would never guess in a hundred million years. Yeah. Five hundred. Wait, is Smith it a pistol Wesson. caliber? Five hundred Smith and Wesson. Elephant gun. Okay. No, I, I, oh, oh, oh we have show visual. and tell, show and tell. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you miss it. You yeah. get to see cool yeah. stuff. Whoa. Look at that. Look Looky at there. That. That's very nice. <laughs> now that is a handgun. <laughs> That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> wow. That's, 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 that's hunting. God forbid self-defense. This is anything you need. Yes, it yeah. is. And if it runs out, you just beat somebody to death with it. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You can murder an elk with that thing. Good Lord. Okay, <laughs> great choice. I have no arguments with anything that was said. Let me back up to October of 2011. I'll keep this story real quick. Short. I didn't own a gun until October 2011. Really? Wow. Gary's father passed away. And wanted me to have these six guns. Now, I wasn't anti-gun. I grew up, my dad had guns. I remember my dad, you know, was um, used to do pistol competitions back in Tuscaloosa. A lot of things. I just was in retail management. That's all I ever did. And played golf. And that was it. I, did, I just relaxed. I, I didn't, just didn't, wasn't aware of it. Get six guns. And then I'm like going... Kind of cool. Let me learn about these. Then I started collecting calibers. 
<laughs> one gun I always saw and, and and Sherry and Sherry, my wife even goes, that's 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 awesome. I said, yeah, I'll find it out one day. And somebody asked me, why do you want this? I said, because it's the biggest you can get and because I can. <laughs> and Size matters. <laughs> don't love you. Don't. But it's one of those things where I started buying guns because I was collecting calibers. And then I taught myself how to reload on YouTube. So I started collecting calibers and then buying reloading dies and all that stuff. So I taught myself how to do that. Then everything happened in the um, before Trump years. And me and some buddies went and bought some property to have a place to shoot our guns. And then based on that, I said, well, I've been in business a long time. I think we can get people out here and actually get some paper day hunts going on. That started Triple Forks Hunting, the hunting property that Lane Evans now runs because I'm not doing that anymore. Well, I'm there. I'm, I got a, I did some hunts during the fall when I was uh, during the winter when I wasn't in any, excuse me, shooting events. And which led to Larry Joe Steedley, which led to Steel Target Paint which led to still challenge, which led to me going to my first USPSA match at the Mississippi classic going, Ooh, they run with the guns. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> then going to nine days of nationals and being baptized in the nine days of nationals. <laughs> and then here we are today, but it all started because of a, um, a situation where Sherry's father passed away. And just things kept happening and happening and happening. And I kept opening the doors because I can always turn around and walk out if I don't like it. And I open every door. And that's kind of how we met when you, when we went do a podcast. I'm like, sure, <laughs> I'm all in. So that's what got to die. I'm always going to open doors and see what's around the corner and um, keep growing the sport. That's awesome. So that uh, that's a, that's a real lemon lemonade situation. Yes. Like you got some <laughs> lemons and all of a sudden you're like uh, six degrees of, I'm going to make a bunch of businesses out of it. Just that's a win. I, it, it was, a, it's a huge win so far, but I could not do it. I could have never done it without everybody and all the shooters who, you know, like we talked about before the ambassadors, the ones that aren't ambassadors, which are just as important, the word of mouth, you know, that's just been one of those things and going to matches and every match I've gone to, now where everybody's excited that I'm there and excited to, you know, be a part of the process and part of the shooting sports. And I picked up some great um, manufacturers, you know, you know, you've heard it, you've seen, you didn't see them at this past national. We might have had, I had the, did I have the Hunter's HD Gold custom guns out there as well? You know, were there? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so either. No, no. I actually traveled with Hunter's, a bunch of hus, 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 custom hunters hd gold guns that i've had made okay and i started doing that because if somebody goes to a match and their gun goes down well they can use one of my guns to finish i see it all the time where anybody alone in steel challenge especially if you have a gun go down here take this one finish the match here's this but by doing this over the past two years i've had manufacturers who can't be at matches offer to make guns for me to take with me to matches, let people know, do this. And in return, I've, I've hooked up with um, federal and Ely to be able to get some ammo, not, not lots of ammo, but some ammo. So if anybody said, well, I've never shot this JP rifle. I've never shot this, you know, you know, a Kai custom gun. Well, here's some ammo, go shoot and, you know, go to it safe, go, you know, go do it, go shoot it. That way you can actually try it. And doing that, um, Vortex Optics it contacted me after Shot Show last year. They wanted to support me with all the the Vortex Optics and all the guns and support you know and do that with the custom guns. Springer Precision got with me and wanted to do all the base pads and all the ex magazine extensions and everything. So I'm able to help promote other people through Hunters HD Gold and what we do who can't be in the shooting sports all the time. And that's important because yeah, one it's expensive to go to all these matches and do what I do, but unless you're all in just dabbling here and there is not going to be a good, good return on investment. You got to be all in and you got to do it. 
though, which is back to the other question or other comment I made before. The reason I don't shoot, I want to be, you know, I want to be involved in this in different ways because I enjoy the sport. I love going to matches on the weekends and finding out where the where the the super squad or where the drama is at because I want to see the I want to see the people shoot and see what happens. <laughs> that comes with shooting sports. I try for it. I, I've learned people by watching people my entire life. I know when somebody's in first and somebody's in second and I can see how people change. That's a cool thing to experience <laughs> at a That's local awesome. match. doesn't even matter at a local match. It's just as intense. <laughs> yeah. Now, Brian, I'm sure you don't remember. I was the, um, Last year, you were at the Virginia State match in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, and you went live with David Ankeny, who was the match director. Yes. Uh, I was the medic at that match, and I was the one who held the phone for you while you were live. <laughs> Small world. Yes. Yes. So much. It always helps. <laughs> so, no, no. That's wonderful. Yeah, I've been... Been to a lot of places, and I'm, I'm, I've got a lot on the schedule for this year. So I'm, I'm going to a lot of places I've never been to this year as well. A lot, a lot of stuff up in the Midwest. Um, going to Grand Junction, Colorado a couple of times um, this year. Going out to um, West Texas, maybe to Arizona, and um, driving everywhere I go. So I'm looking forward to this year. Ooh, that's a drive from Alabama. You got a new car? Colorado. Way. You, you know, I've always had the 10 by 10 tent that everybody's seen me you know, do and have, I am, I did acquire last August, a 2014 Mercedes Benz Sprinter van that passenger 15 pa passenger van that I have completely gutted and just got finished three weeks ago. Still traveling with the tent, but the van will be backed up to the tent where you can walk into the back of the van, and I'm gonna have all the Hunters HD Gold custom guns there, all the manufacturers we talked about, stuff like that, not selling just for show. And I'm also gonna have a Hunters HD Gold custom shop inside the van. Ooh. And here's what that looks like I've gone to a lot of matches where I'm always giving away a free pair of custom glasses, and so many people have tried to buy them. So many people have said, hey, can I get these made? Can I get a pair of these for myself? I'm actually going to have a custom shop there with Hunter's HD Gold custom glasses ready to purchase on spot. So that way, if somebody wants to pick up a second pair or if they see, I like that frame, I want to get my prescription in that frame, then I'm going to have stuff there to sell directly to the public at ridiculously low prices for the frames. Those frames are marked a lot. It's nice. I mean, a lot. <laughs> nice. We're doing Good the custom. Still going to have everything out front with all the demo days, but there's more. Um, to support the shooting sports even more, I have there's a there's an energy drink I've been drinking since 2017. It's called Con Hemp Energy Drink, and it's a hemp based energy drink, no CBD, no THC, out of Melbourne, Florida. And I've actually talked to the um, CEO Robert Clark about it. And this year, every I told him every match I go to in the mornings, people will go by with two energy drink or every time, or you know sometimes the water if they want to be decent. But most of the times to keep them awake early in the morning. He has been in. He's he's all about guns for one, which was like question number two, and he sponsors some long distance skiers, but he wants to get into the different kind of sports that aren't really out there like other people in the industry of energy drinks have done in the past. And he has given me kind of gold energy drinks to take to every match to give away for free. So I will have energy drinks. There's an awning that comes out on the side of the van. I will actually have tables and chairs put out for a whole experience with iced um, kind of gold at this event. If you that way, if you're on a break, doing lunch you'll have a place to sit down and come and eat relax and it's gonna there's a whole big experience gonna happen with hunters hd gold this year so going from a 10 by 10 tent to a 30 foot by 20 foot area is going to be an entire experience for hunters hd gold to help promote the shooting sports and so it's doing two things one if you were hunters hd gold and you're aware of what's going on 
I got a place to go hang out. <laughs> and two, if you're not, but you've always had questions, all right, this is going to be the breaking point of, let me go see what's going on. Cause I need to just see if I'm interested now because I've seen this guy and he seems to be growing, but here he's got a lot of cool custom guns in the back of the van. Let's go see what this is all about. So it's just another way. It's all marketing. It's all everything, but to give more back to the shooters with a sugar-free energy drink that actually tastes good. And it's pretty cool process. It's a pretty cool product and it doesn't give you the shakes and it doesn't give you a hangover. And in the shooting sports, you don't want either one of those. So I thought about it before I did it. But well, I'll, 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 all I heard was mobile podcast location, HD gold van. Well, you're not <laughs> 2.0. Uh, USA has, you know, they always look for a place to do interviews with Mike and Jake having to run all over the place. I have put dino mat over the inside of this place and four seats inside the van turn towards each other. And you can actually have a live podcast show from in the van. And I've, I've got a cell phone booster on top of the van. So if cell service is not bad, frost proof or anywhere else in the, in the boonies, then we'll have cell service as well to do live streaming as well from inside the van. So yes. And well, there's have, also, we have to go. Yeah, exactly. Now, and there's also Hunter's HD Gold cigars and ranges that permit adult beverages will be provided as well after the match. We're going. I'm, all saying, out. I'm just saying. Be, <laughs> and here's here's what I'm getting at because what what I would ultimately like to do is actually do an episode live at a match. Not a local match, but a major match, like so, like the right. Virginia State or Area Eight, because that's where we're at. You know, we're we're right along. We're in Virginia, so we'd either do Area Eight or which is up in West Virginia, or the Virginia State, which is right here in Fredericksburg. So, you coming down to South Carolina at the end of next month? I am not. Yeah, he's yeah. I got another match. I'll be up to locally. Or yeah, unfortunately, I, I yeah my my students are very busy, which means I am very busy. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll I don't call know what Brian knows, but but we have we're all three of us are firefighter paramedics. So. Oh, what? I know that. Wonderful. Yeah, that's our yes. that's our daytime so, job. So it's wonderful on our days yeah. off. Oh, that, that's wonderful. The, to be a first responder and all that kind of stuff. Thank you for everything you've done, of course, and are doing every day. Then that's just wonderful. And that was the that was my target market during the the pandemic itself. So thank you again for everything y'all are doing. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. It. That's when we do. We're not but making fools like Leo, of ourselves on a range. True. Right. <laughs> but like Leo, Leo, Leo teaches. Leo teaches the paramedics, so when they come out in the field, they know what they're doing. Uh, when they get out there, uh, Dave on that side, <laughs> he's actually on a pair. Of, he's on the medic unit, uh, one of the busiest in the entire county that we work in. And uh, I just happen to be health and safety right now, but I'm going to the fire marshal's office. So I'll be up in the fire marshal's office. And fire so marshal's they're giving him a gun for work. Yes. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> Tell him you got. <laughs> <laughs> revolver optics right there revolver optics that's, that's a great idea yes that's, I'll it'll get actually it. look like the right size for him i'll get one <laughs> the, oh, the holster would be so big you can probably put your entire resume with your firefighter on the side probably <laughs> right yeah oh yeah Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. So yeah, we have we have a great jobs. We enjoy it. Like they like they said, this that's our full time job. But we love shooting on the weekends and when we have time to go shoot and everything like that. We have, we have a good times. Wonderful. I hope hope you can get down to Alabama at least once during some of the nationals we're going to have for sure. That's that's a beautiful range. You'll love it. A lot of fun. I definitely plan on being yeah, there. We're we're yeah. I think we were look, looking at October. I think the uh, carry optics are in October. And mm -hmm. if you come in a yeah. day earlier, time in the afternoon, like I said, we do lab tours as well. So if you want to drive 45 minutes on a 
half a day you don't have anything else to do with and you want to see the lenses being made, come by the lab because that's a pretty cool process. We'll be, we're going to be doing tours that whole week of nationals, every one of them. So it'll be fun. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I I, th I think Dave's going to be the only one actually shooting. Well, I think maybe Dave and Huggy. I'm not going to be shooting it because I haven't shot carry optic ever. I just yeah. put carry optics on my pistols to go from production to carry optic. So I'm I'm not going to be shooting. But since I won't be going to production in May because my both of my kids were born in May, I might be able to swing a hey, I'll go be the videographer. And uh, we could definitely do some podcasting from there. We can do that. But, you know, ain't life happens with a lot of people. There's always a couple of spots that may come open. So be prepared to shoot as well. Who cares if you've been there? Still, you're still there shooting it. So yeah, I've never gone to nationals until I went to nationals. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And the first time I went by myself and I was like, this is OK, cool. Don't know anybody. There was, a, there was a lot of people at last year's nationals who shot their very first national for the first time. So it's a situation where people do it all the time. So definitely, if, you, if you're there and you're not shooting, there'll be plenty yeah. to do. If, if, if you get a chance, always go for it. If, if you haven't gotten a chance to listen, it was our first interview ever for the podcast. The girl, one of the girls that was in our squad, it was her first shoot ever. Yeah, and she shot with us at nationals. First so she had never ever. shot a competition before, and she chose nationals as her very first match. <laughs> as her introductory match, that is awesome. <laughs> it's a great interview. It she is. was her and her husband are phenomenal, and we love them dearly. Um, but <laughs> if you ever get a chance to listen to what the experience of shooting nationals for the first time ever as your first competition, that's a great episode. Wait, I will look. As to my list, I got a lot of um, a lot of time to catch up on the shooting sports during the off. But yeah, um, I don't have any other questions. So, nope. gents, you guys got anything? I'm good. Uh, I'm I'm good. He answered all my questions, and I I think it's awesome. Well, let me ask you a question as a group. Because the hot topics lately, of course, all the social media outlets and podcasts that are happening all around us are the new um, rule changes. So, <laughs> <I tell Artie. laughs> first time you've had an opportunity to even talk about it. I'm going to let Dave feel that one. Uh we talked about this briefly a couple of days ago, but I would say um, I'm good with, I like the magazine change. I like the holster change where you can put it anywhere. Uh, I, as for the light, I'm not going to use a light on mine. I'm not going to be putting anything underneath the barrel like that. And I don't know that it's really going to help anybody. I, I don't, I don't see an advantage to it. So I know, I know there is one high level shooter who posted a video on Instagram showing how in, you remember at Frostproof, you have the building where stage one was shot and he yep. showed how it could be an advantage in there. But otherwise I'm, I'm, I see it in limited areas that it's going to have any effect at all. I, I think, I think there's a, a lot of rumbling and. You know, I think it'll go away. I, I agree with that statement. I've I've asked a lot of questions to people that are dabbling and people that are involved and people that, you know, make decisions to get three different perspectives from everybody. And um what you just said, it will go away, like you said, but it's it's one of those things where we are finding out from what they've heard that match directors that are doing level one matches throughout the United States. Keep this in mind. Um, are the ones who requested this to begin with because they're getting new shooters that come in. And from what I understand, USPSA membership of people that come in for the first year 
and actually renew the second year is a very, very high turnover rate. And they've oh, questioned geez. a lot of people of what the was. The reason was, and a high percentage of this, based on what I understand, was because I brought in my everyday gun and I had to shoot a class that I had to go spend a lot more money if I want to be competitive in instead of using a gun that I use every day. And, and that I, was one of the biggest eye opening got as an aha moment. And and I have seen guys at the local matches shooting appendix with a light underneath their gun. Um, so I get it. I mean, you open it up to a whole lot, a, a whole lot more people coming in. So I don't think it's going to affect nationals or any of that. Those guys, you're not going to, you're not going to put a flashlight on the bottom of your gun and win nationals. It's not going to happen. So. And that, yep. Podcast say the same people that beat the same people are going to beat the same people no matter what happens. And that's okay. But from a business side of it, because I'm always thinking what's going on behind the scenes or trying to figure out what's going on behind the scenes, I can I get it why they're doing it the sport because with the high turnover rate of more than 50% that people that don't join for the second year um, and finding out why. It will. I think it will retain more people in the United States Practical Shooting Association, which I think is very important. Because where do these people go? Do they go to Do they go to shoot IDPA? Do they go to shoot something else, or do they not even compete anymore? Because they think they they're not going to be able to use the gun they use. So I, I I think it's like you said. I think I, I do think it's going to go away, but um, I really see, and I hope the results of the um, new shooters coming in is what it really does acquire because as a sponsor and the official I wear the USPSA, um, I want to see new people come into the shooting sports. That's, that's where I can continue to grow and, and stay, you know, a part of this sport for many years to come I mean, more people keep coming in, especially with all the new people that have bought guns over the past, you know, six months. So if we capture a small percentage of that, much bigger can support grow faster and get more people watching it on social media, get more people watching it on um, YouTube, get more people watching on shooting USA, which in return talks about ratings. Like we talked about earlier, then all of a sudden we're a corn holy on ESPN. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Growth that is again. growth. <laughs> well, and, and, and that brings up two things, Brian, one. Um, and I think we're in a smaller percentage uh, we like to see the idea of it grow, but I also listen to other podcasts and there are a lot of other high level shooters who have podcasts that don't want it to grow. And I'm not sure exactly why. I know one of the reasons is they're like, it's already hard to get in some matches as it is. You grow it bigger, you get more shooters in. Now, how's everybody going to shoot? Okay. I get it. There were 8 million new gun owners. If you get 1% of that, that's 80,000 people. But I look at it as, look at the bigger picture, there's safety in numbers. The more people we get, the more people who shoot, then it's going to be easier to maintain our Second Amendment rights. So I do look at it as a political movement as well. And I, and I think you can't discount that. So that, to me, is the biggest reason I feel we need to grow the sport, we need to make it bigger, and we need to be on ESPN. You know, I, I've listened to, I, I, I'm 99 I'm pretty sure I'll listen to some of the same podcasts you're talking about. And if this sport grows to that level, then there'll have to be different branches of that when it happens. You know, the PGA is the PGA. Okay. There's also other divisions that people play in golf to get to the US to the PGA. If the sport mm -hmm. grows amongst crazy numbers, then that can happen. The USPSA can branch off, and we have this for the elite. We have this for the amateur pros and so forth. Just like Steel Challenge is a feeder for the USPSA, who says there can't be another division in the middle that you go from here to here, and then you get your PGA. Mm -hmm. So... But you can't do that, in my opinion. We probably could, but it's still going to be harder because it takes more money, it takes more funding, and takes more everything with what we have with only 
50 something thousand with 30 something thousand members and only half of them are active. Right. Not a lot of people. That's no. that is when you look at the number of gun owners, that's bonkers. There, it's that nothing. It's that small a number. Right. It's nothing. It, so, it, it would be like driving through a subdivision and seeing three cars. No, <laughs> I, I ban what the pros of our current pros are or saying. I get it. But if there's not growth and then more people paying attention to it, we're going to be where we're at, I believe, and, and not ever, you know, and have the same people come and go and hopefully, you know, not, it's not going to do anything. Yeah. Especially if we don't capture the over 50% of the people who aren't signing up for a second year in USPSA. That's a big number. It is a big number. Yeah, I mean, you know, Leo said earlier we were nerds, all of us. I did a um, a big spreadsheet tracking 21 major matches last year. And in, in just five years, Carry Optics is the most popular division in all of um, USPSA. And if you look at the commercial side of gun ownership, what's everybody putting on their guns? Optics. What's every gun manufacturer making now? Optic slide ready guns. So, yep. you know, a lot of what we're doing is what's happening in the civilian side of things, or I will say the marketing side of things. And I feel, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the back, what's going on in the background, but I feel like there's a disconnect with USPSA and all these gun manufacturers and and marketing. There's something missing there as to why we're not getting all these people shooting in these different, even if it is IDPA or Steel Challenge or whatever. Right. Where are all these gun owners and what, what are they doing? Why are they not out shooting this stuff too? Well, I think also that comes down to if right. the right. where they buy where they buy the gun, if the gun owners of the shops are not saying, "Hey, look, you bought this gun. I got something that you might be interested in," you know, maybe look into the you know, USPSA uh, and and or you know people that are going to get uh, training or you know taught how to properly use a firearm. The instructors need to say, "Hey, now that I have taught you this." you know how to safely use a gun now you might want to look into going to these places that you can practice your skills that you have now been taught at these at these places i think that's where we're the uh breakdown is taking place because nobody is promoting it you know and pushing it to these new gun owners to take that opportunity oh and that's what i will say to that is why i challenge People all the time when I talk to them, hey, I saw those videos or I saw your live broadcast on Facebook and I saw your YouTube videos you posted the match. Thank you so much. And I say, you're very welcome. Go share it. Because I'm one person. But if I get a thousand views in a weekend and nobody's sharing it, is the word really getting spread? Right. Go mm -hmm. share it. Go share it. Because you're going to catch somebody that goes, I've heard him doing this, but now he's sharing. What? What is now? I've got to go see what this is. Go share it. Get people involved in the sports, no matter what it is. Start them off, you know, anywhere they want to start off at. But what's happening in, in the gun stores? I've been in a lot of them here locally during the during the winter. Um, they're selling the pistols. They're selling the optics. They're selling the laser flashlight combination that goes in the front of it. They're selling everything with a gun because they're not making any money off the gun. They got to sell the accessories. So when all these people get these guns that are accessorized up and get the nickname tackle to Timmy, well, they were sold that they're new. But if, if they can get involved to use their gun currently and be competitive and not come in last place and open because they didn't have an open gun and go, wait a minute, I finished in the top 20 in, in production. Then that made somebody go, wait a minute, that's, that's cool. I may continue to do this and see if I can get better. But if they don't re-up because I'm just going to be, well, I'm not going to go spend, you know, 
wonderful money for a wonderful, you know, open gun, <laughs> then oh, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna do that. I mean, that's that's like, well, I just invested this and I, I'm my wife would kill me if I wouldn't spend that kind of money. My point being is I hope what the vision of the USPSA by doing this is will capture more people to sign up for the second year. And I think that was the overall goal that nobody's talking about. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think it's a good goal. So we'll see what happens. We'll see. But like you said, I hope it all, everybody's got some very valid points. I'm friends with all of them on the podcast. They yeah. all got valid points. They did. It. Just got to open our eyes up on both sides and, and be able to talk about it. And I challenge Mike Foley to hopefully get out there and, and start doing some, you know, answers directly on the podcast himself to get some answers to these people because he needs to be in the forefront of this because Mike Foley didn't make these decisions. It was the board that made these decisions, but now he's got to speak to the decisions that were made by the board. So right. He needs, to, he needs to get out there and talk about it. So hopefully he will soon. Yeah. This, Cause the center that you answer questions, the, the less chance you have to get misinformation. So. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, worst case scenario, it people hate it and they're like, all right, this is dumb. But at least you tried something to to innovate and, you know, make some kind of a, a racket or some noise that's going to hopefully bring somebody in that'll stay, like you say. So, yeah. It's just like it's just like my business. You know, if, if somebody buys Hunter's HD Gold, that's wonderful. But if they never buy it again, you got to figure out why. So my job is, you know, to keep you in it with your entire shooting slash hunting career. And that's what, you know, you, anybody can be a one hit wonder, but you've got to be able to, you know, capture and keep it and have the customer loyalty there and brand loyalty to be um, long term. And I think the USPSA is very capable of that. And hope of this is a move in the right direction. I hope capture some of that that they're losing every year let's hope fingers crossed yeah. yep well i guess all that's really left for us at this point is to kind of roll out the red carpet and uh do you have any um anything you want to plug specifically before we kind of get out of here any charities you want to talk about uh anything that you want to just get out before we uh kind of end the, the show we, we talked a lot about a lot of great things tonight. Thank you so much for giving me the time and the platform to be able to talk about Hunter's HD Gold and Hunter's HD Gold and Hunter's HD Ruby and being able to talk about my passions as far as the um, Second Amendment and supporting the shooting sports. Because um, without all that, you know, all of us just go to our regular jobs and don't have the free time to do and we pick something else to spend our money at doing. And to be able to be in a family that we're in now where we can have all these differences on a daily basis with politics, with um, decision makings, with how this is working, how this is not working, how this gun works, how this gun doesn't work, how this optics better and how this is not. When everybody gets to the line and make ready is given, everybody is on the same page, same vision, same goal. And it doesn't matter what happened during the week everybody is there to relax and have a good time and enjoy the sport. And I'm just proud to be um, a little part of that in the shooting community and to be able to hang out with you guys every weekend. So once again, thank you so much for having me on your show and look forward to seeing you at the range soon. Yes, thank sir. You. It's our pleasure. Thank you for coming out and spending time with us and listening to us give each other a hard time. <laughs> yeah. It was a good time, Brian. We appreciate it. <laughs> Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, Brian. Chris, Take thanks, care. David. Thanks. Until next time. Don't be a little bitch. Yeah.